It's a country where the union membership has remained very high and at the same time incomes of the middle class have remained very high. Basically we've seen this hollowing out of jobs in the U.S. that pay between thirty and sixty thousand dollars, that middle class pay, and the, uh, they're being replaced by a lot of jobs. The top of the top ten fastest growing jobs, seven pay less than uh, about twenty seven thousand a year, certainly under thirty thousand. So you're sort of left when you get when you lose one of these jobs. You're left, you know, do I have to go back and get a college degree and try to get in the white collar economy, which is a big leap, scary leap for a lot of people or do I take, you know, your best option is usually a warehouse job right now. has to be more than the educational opportunity. That's always the easy solution. And I will say whether it's done through a union or we're starting to see this proposal in the United States from the Biden administration for a big expansion of the role of government. And what they're talking about is more of the European style uh, role of the government where they're not just helping you educationally, but they're also helping provide child care, helping provide universal care for three and four year olds. Without uh, new technology, we would lack the ability to compete on the global markets. So productivity and competitiveness is one part of it. And the other part of it is, uh, of course, that uh, it improves the working conditions. Uh, we have new technology can help us uh, to get rid of uh, heavy, uh, heavy lifting and, and, and stuff like that. It is very easy for companies to hire and fire uh, people. So that's, that's the flexibility part of the system. But there's a, a great means of social security as well, the security part of it, and it makes it better for the workers when they are uh, laid off uh, to get education, retraining, and also um, some of money in, in order to kind of uh, uh, keep up with their living standards.